I'm really honored to be here. I'm glad to be here with your state senator, uh, State Senator Jerry Pachowski. Who, uh, he, he and I knew each other way back to his days in the State Assembly and now in the State Senate. So, Jerry, uh, thank you for joining us here today. I appreciate your superintendent, uh, your principals, school board supporters, others here, but most of all, uh, uh, teachers, faculty, staff here, most of all, students. Uh, thanks for the chance to come and visit today. Uh, we just came from, I, I was just looking at a little bit of the work of the the welding being done and work work and the shop class uh, for auto mechanics as well. Actually, the welds, remember the welds I saw were pretty remarkable, good welds. I think any of the students doing that are gonna be able to be picked up on a job uh, right in a jiffy. And uh, it was great earlier, went to, to see some of the elementary school kids and some of the work being done there and heard a little bit about their day. Uh, today, I want to come by and spend a, a few minutes uh, talking a little bit, in a minute I'll, I'll talk a little bit about our state budget, particularly for those of you who are seniors and juniors and for the rest looking ahead to the future, you're in a really good place right now. But not just here in this gym and this school, but, but for you for the future, it's really pretty bright. And the reason I say that is back when my sons, Tonette and I, as I mentioned, have two sons, Matt and Alex, when they were the age that some of you raised your hands in seventh and eighth grade, and I, like a lot of other parents, was, with children the same age, we're kind of worried. Because back seven, eight years ago, we wondered where the future was gonna be for, for our sons as others did about their sons and their daughters because not only here in the state, in this country and across the nation, we had a recession. And we were really, really worried about whether or not our sons, like a lot of other parents, were worried about their children, whether or not they were even gonna have a chance once they got out of school, whether it was through an apprenticeship or a technical college degree or an undergraduate degree, whether or not there'd even be any jobs, whether there'd be a career path out there. And the good news for you today is to tell you that that, that has changed. Certainly here in the state of Wisconsin, it's, it's happened to a, a lesser extent across the nation, but it's happening across the country and around the world, but particularly here in the state of Wisconsin. In fact, it ties in well yesterday. Uh, every state, including Wisconsin, has numbers that come out month by month that show how many people are working in the state of Wisconsin. What the employment levels are, what's, the, what's called the unemployment rate, meaning the, the percentage of people who are out looking for work. And yesterday they pointed out in Wisconsin, our unemployment rate was down to 3.4%. Now, that, let's see, what does that mean? Any of you who studied math know, statistics only matter if you compare them, right? So in January of 2010, the unemployment rate in the state was 9.2%. The numbers that came out yesterday were for March, so a month back. They're now down to 3.4%. In fact, to put that even more in perspective, the last time they were that low, meaning that good, was April of 2000. Which this I could figure out doing my math. Looking at most of you here, you weren't even born. As adults, we kind of think 2000 doesn't sound that far back, right? But for these kids, these students, most of them weren't even born. So that's like a lifetime ago. And, and so it's not only that unemployment's low, we saw in March again, we're at an all time high amount. We've never had more people in the workforce employed here in the state of Wisconsin than we have right now. In fact, the percentage of people working in the state is, is one of the highest in the nation. It's a, it's more than two thirds, it's almost 69% of all the adults in the state are working. And so besides me keeping track of numbers and data like that, what it means for all of you, particularly for those who are seniors and juniors and those looking ahead to your future, it means your future's as bright as you want it to be. There's, there's not a career that you can't pursue that isn't overwhelming you higher. From, from those who want careers in manufacturing and construction and transportation, there's, and they'll, they'll hire you right away. There are so many openings out there. For those who are interested in computer science and information technology, there is a growing need here across the country, and particularly here in the state of Wisconsin. For those who want to help in healthcare, whether it's a certified nursing assistant at a long-term care facility, or an RN or a doctor at a, at a, a clinic or a hospital or an office out there, whether, whether it's someone who wants to go into education or law enforcement, even people want to go into finance and accounting. There are so many opportunities for you out there uh, that the future, I think, in many ways, couldn't have been any brighter at any point since most of you have been born. And so part of it today is not just talking about budget, but 
but, but hopefully inspire and get you, you to know that there are many, many different options out there. And that part of what's important for us to know is we, we want you, all of you here in this school district, and, and in school districts like this all across the state, we want to make sure that every single student, no matter what your background, no matter what your parents do for a living, no matter where you came from, no matter if you're born here or not, that every student has a chance to succeed, that student success is a priority for everyone in this state. As a parent of two kids who went through public schools, as the uncle who's got two, two nieces in public schools, as someone who's a product of public schools, I want that for all of you. That's a moral imperative for me. But as your governor who talks to employers every day, I also know it's an economic imperative. Because if we're going to continue to grow, if we're going to continue to prosper, if we're going to continue to create more jobs and higher wages like we saw last year, in fact, wages went up about 7.5% last year through the first three quarters. That's a pretty heavy-duty increase compared to where things were a few years ago. If we're going to continue to do that, the only thing stopping us is not having enough people to fill the positions. This week, we have a, we have a state uh, website that's called jobcenterwisconsin.com. It's not what we do. We're not a hiring agency. We just voluntarily put that information up. You know how many jobs were listed on that website last, year for jo or last week for job openings? 95,000 job openings. 95,000 job openings. And so again, the reason all those statistics matter, I think to any of you here, whether you're a senior or someone thinking ahead a few years from now, is, is the sky's the limit. You can pursue any of the careers that you want. And, and don't limit yourself to just one place or the other. We, we were talking as we were looking through, uh, looking at the, the, the woodworking the work being done and the welding and other things like that and say, boy, there are great career opportunities. In fact, if you think about manufacturing, manufacturing as a whole, Jobs in the state pay about 24% more than the average job. So there are tremendous opportunities that in many cases require an apprenticeship or maybe an associate degree from a technical college. There are other careers that require a four-year undergraduate degree that maybe you'll go to one of our University of Wisconsin campuses or, or maybe a great private college or university. There are others that require education beyond that to be a doctor or a specialist or others. And we tremendously need those, particularly in rural parts across the state. And so today, I want to be here to reinforce all of that to you, but also to tell you that, that as we held listing sessions last year, we were here in this county, we were in all the other 71 other counties across the state. One of the things we kept hearing, even before these latest numbers, were, were people telling us that we had listing sessions where students and superintendents and parents and, and uh, retirees and small business owners and farmers and healthcare professionals and all sorts of people came to and what we, could, we heard over and over and over again was what I just mentioned. People said, I have jobs. I have jobs open. I got help one inside out. I just don't have enough people to fill those jobs. And so we made it a priority this year with the state budget to make the workforce, the, the development and, and building a strong workforce in the state our number one priority. And as part of that, the, the fundamental building block of that is a strong K-12 system in the state. In this budget, we put more state money in the K-12 education than we've ever put before. So in every school district, in every part of the state, uh, for the next two years of the budget, if it's passed the way we propose, there'll, there'll be more money in the first year and then more money on top of that for every student in the state. But then on top of that, you know, having talked to our state superintendent of public instruction, Dr. Tony Evers, we said well, we need to help particularly small rural school districts as well. So in addition to that, there's there's money that's technically called things like sparsity aid and high transportation aid costs and things of that nature. Those are all things that we know, no matter where it's at in the state, whether it's rural because of farmland or rural because of woods or sometimes a combination of both, that there are unique costs that apply to many of our smaller rural school districts. And so there's additional resources put in there. And the reason for it is we know sometimes the cost of transportation <coughs> dealing with how spread out people are, and sometimes even access to technology, like broadband, high-speed internet connections, are all things that, that provide unique challenges in rural parts of the state of Wisconsin. And so we put additional money there so that the dollars that every district gets will actually go to help all of you with student success, not, not to be pushed off to pay for transportation or other costs that are unique to rural areas. 
we're doing more on top of that. We're, we're doubling the amount of money that we set aside for fab labs to make sure that every school district that wants to have those can have those. We're putting $52 million uh, into our broadband technology grant program and our expanding our TEACH program so that, that you here in this district and eventually not just the district, but, but everyone in the surrounding community and, and further outside of town and surrounding towns can have access to a, a fiber network of high-speed internet connections. Because we know, no matter where you live, if you can get access to high-speed internet connections, you can do business, you can do work with anyone in the world. And if you don't, that becomes a huge competitive disadvantage. If you have it, then all the other things that are cool about living here or other places across the state suddenly become a good thing. Because if you can do work with anyone in the world, then you can still go out and be out in the outdoors. You can be on a stream or a lake or a pond, as opposed to somebody who lives in Chicago or New York or LA who might be hours away from that kind of interaction. And then in this whole new world of the, the new look of the work-life balance out there, suddenly that becomes a competitive advantage to live in a place where you can not only work, but you can go out and have fun and enjoy yourself but you gotta have access to technology to do that. So that's included in this budget as well. I tell you all these things because uh, after our budget came out a couple months ago, somebody, uh, one of the reporters in the Capitol said, uh, asked me how I was gonna lobby the legislature on this. So what was I doing to lobby lawmakers in the state capitol, particularly the, the leadership? But, and I said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna spend my time lobbying in the capitol. So particularly when it comes to education, I, I'm gonna lobby by going to schools and making the case, seeing the good work that's being done, affirming that, affirming the teachers and the, the principals and the superintendents and the community support that's there. And the good news is so far we've had some success. The school board members know that a few weeks ago there was an alert put out by the Wisconsin Association of School Boards that there was a worry at the time. There were some rumbling, some concerns in the Capitol that at least the state assembly might take the budget we presented and wipe it out and just start at zero, build it from the base up again. And the worry was that they'd never get to the levels we put into K through 12 education in the state. The good news is about two weeks ago, they, they made a decision and while they changed some other parts, which is fine, we'll work with them on that. When it came to K through 12 education, they kept our budget as the base. Now that doesn't mean we're done yet, that there could be changes and tweaks along the way, and so that's why I haven't stopped visiting schools, because I want to keep reaffirming why this is important for schools across the state and why it's not just about student success, it's really about building a strong workforce. And so we're going to keep talking about that, and we're going to keep talking about it long after the budget, but we're going to particularly keep talking about it between now and probably the end of June when the, the complete state budget is done. And, the new fiscal year starts on July 1st. And certainly I appreciate uh, the adults who are here who are passionate about schools and supporting this community. Um, but I would encourage all of you, as students as well, that if this is something you're interested in, uh, to, to let uh, not only your senator who's here, who I appreciate by his presence, obviously supports our schools, and I'm glad that Jerry is here, but, but to let uh, Bob Colt, who's in the state uh, assembly, actually brought this up to me in one of the meetings. He said, you gotta go to Abbotsford. There's good things happening uh, there in the school district. And, and he brought that up as well. Uh, but to let people know, not just of this, but other issues, if you've got them. I remember when I was in the state assembly, sometimes when I'd go to high schools in my district, the students would say, oh, you know, does it matter? You know, they'd say, oh, I'm not even voting in this. So you, you'd be surprised if, if you've got a good idea, if you say, hey, this is something I'm interested or concerned about, whether you, you send an email or a text or write a letter or set up a meeting or make a call, that can have an impact as well. So uh, certainly uh, feel free to do that and, and to pass that on to others. That's part of the reason why we came here today was to affirm the good work that you're doing, to see your wonderful facility. Well, great to be here in Abbotsford. Uh, this is just not, for us another great example of reinforcing for us to build a strong workforce. We just saw yesterday new unemployment numbers out 3.4%, lowest it's been since April of the year 2000. We now have more people employed in the state of Wisconsin than we've ever had before. And we've got one of the highest percentage of people working. And so 
now more than ever, when we invest in our schools, it's not just investing in student success, which is important in its own right, we're really investing in helping to build a stronger workforce and fill the abundance of positions we have open. This week alone, JobCenterWisconsin.com has over 95,000 job openings. I wanna make sure the students here and others like them are getting the education and the skills and the training they need to be a part of that great workforce going forward. And what does it mean to you to come to a smaller school district like this in Abbotsford? Well, it's really important twofold. One, part of our message that not only do we put more money in for schools than ever before, this is a historic high, but on top of that, for schools like Abbotsford and other small schools across the state, we added more money to help rural school districts. So there's more money for transportation, there's more money for what's called sparsity, all things, so that the dollars we give to every school district here and other smaller rural districts will actually go to help student success not to pay for all those other side costs of technology and transportation. We've added more and account for that, so the dollars really do go into student success. And that's really important, whether it's in a rural area because of farming land, whether it's a rural area because of a wooded area, or in some cases a bit of both. We wanna make sure that those students, like every other student in the state, has success. Do you have anything more? Okay. Then the, the other thing I wanted to touch on is you recently said the White House you would like to see the White House help out with the dairy farms here in Wisconsin. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, we started working on this last year with President Obama, talking to his U.S. Trade Representative, then the, uh, the previous Secretary of Agriculture. We're now with the new administration keeping it up. Obviously, the recent announcement uh, has made it even more uh, uh, time sensitive. And so I talked to the president on Tuesday. It's part of the reason why he included it in his comments down at Snap-on. He mentioned it again yesterday, which was good, talking about NAFTA and how uh, Canadian uh, dairy policies are uh, a violation of the, at least the spirit of NAFTA and are unfair to America and particularly to dairy farmers here and, and across the country. And so uh, Wednesday already uh, we had uh, a call back from the chief of staff to the president who happens to be from Wisconsin, Ryan's previous. He later that day set up a conference call with me, my secretary of agriculture, and Jaron Kushner, who's the president's son-in-law, and a whole bunch of others in the White House to walk through what we could do. My hope is, because Canada has clearly dug in, uh, the governor of New York and I, Governor Cuomo and I, sent a letter this last week, and we got a pretty intense snapback from Canadian officials, and that they're digging in, um, so I, I'm mindful of the fact that it's not going to be easy, but that's exactly why we've asked the president of the White House to get involved. It's not just enough for me as a governor. I need the president and the White House behind this. And at a minimum, what we'd ask for is delay the implementation here. Give us some more time. You know, Mullen stepped up and helped take on eight dairy farmers, uh, but we need to have other options. People can't just stop milking and you can't just dump the milk. Uh, there's a shelf life and there's a real danger that if we get to the, the drop dead point, we don't have resolution, they're just gonna have to get out of farming and that's unacceptable. And do you know what kind of timeline there is right now to talking to Canada and trying to figure everything out? As soon as possible. I mean, we don't have specific dates. We've asked them to get engaged. I appreciate the fact that I talked to the president on Tuesday, he brought it up immediately. And by the next morning, the White House was already on the phone with us. That's great, but now uh, we need them to fall through. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're gonna engage the new uh, Secretary of Agriculture. They haven't yet put a trade representative in. That's why we need the White House top staff involved with this. And my hope is in the next week or so, we'll, we'll have an idea where they're headed. But again, it's not gonna be easy because Canada's digging in, as you might expect that they would. That's why we need the power of the White House to say, well, if you don't give us relief here, there might be implications elsewhere.